Welcome to Wesley's channel and this is Wesley's news. Today we're gonna be working on part number two video schematic that will explain I believe pretty pretty good DALI free energy device. If you want to find out more go to part number one you're gonna see the short video and a short video will show you how the device looks and how it works. Today's video is mostly for the purpose of us to understand more about not only Dali, but Akua, Toril Kapanaza, Vasmus, Anonymous, and plenty of others. All of those blocks are alike. All of those blocks repeat themselves. Even Lithuania experiment has pretty much a lot to do with it. I did not explain in that video one part that contains the ferrite, right? but I'm gonna go to it. Don't worry guys, together we're gonna make a change. And possibly we may create a world better for all of us, all humanity, all 99% suffering with 1% having more than us. I am not against of wealth and I'm not against of that 1%. What I want is even honest competition of 99% of the world population against 1% of wealthy. Let them have the money. I don't care. Daddy. Part number two of free energy device is one input to start. Those are the information from the previous video where to find other clips and understand how it works. So, I'm going to explain more, a little bit different, as what I did in the part number one. So, we have a three parts, one part, second part, which are impulse forming circuitries and a magic coil. That is a regular inverter from the computer, and that's the load, which is the regular light bulb. That's what we call magic coil. It's made of, of L4, which is connected to the rectifier. L3, which is the regular coaxial cable 50 ohm, and is shorted at the end of it. That would be L2. L2 is just a coil and a capacitor not connected anywhere. And L1 is connected to the lower impulse forming circuit. Experimenter must take that power supply and connect in configuration as in a schematic. The confusing part for some would be power supply of the regular computer and the inverter. Let's start from power supply. Power supply takes 112 volts or 10 volts or 220 volts, depends where you are, and change it to the 12 volts. Inverter takes 12 volts from the battery and change it to 110 or 220, depends where you are in the world. In the first part, I have mentioned inverter as one of the options. When you understand both of those devices, you're gonna meet most of that electronic and those devices in most of the schematics of Akua, Vasmus, or any other guy who's presenting his own free energy devices. In this video, we are not using inverter, we're using power supply that takes 220 volts and give us 12 volts for the European version. 
The 12 volt battery could be the small battery from alarm system, 4 or 8 amp hours. After closing the switch next to the battery, 12 volt from plus of the battery is connected to another 12 volt near terminal or switch K1. Also the voltage from the plus of the battery is going to be delivered to K2 terminal of poles forming circuitry, the upper one. Those arrows symbolize connections that have to be physically made in those points. The lower and the upper block of impulse forming circuitry will have a power now. But that only will happen if we connect switch K1 and K2 on. The lower block of impulse forming circuitry now is activated. Upper block of impulse forming circuitry will have a power as well. TL494 is used in bipolar mode. You see the connections in here and those connections I explain in part number one. TL494 uses the pulse mode with two outputs working in flip-flop mode that would be bipolar. When one impulse is activated, output is activated, the other output is silent and reverse. This TTL operates at a maximum of 40 volts and 200 milliamps. After K1 is switched on, the 12 volt is delivered to the middle tap of the transformer tier 2. If the junction between collector and emitter of this transistor is closed, which is contacting, then the current will flow from the tap on tier 2 to the ground. Now when the junction of two lower transistors is closed, which is conducting, and the upper one is closing, we will have the lower branch conduct in the flip-flap fashion. By flip-flap fashion or flip-flap mode, we may understand that we have a signal at 10 and 9. Um, when we have a 10, then we don't have a 9. And then we have equal response of all of the other elements and eventually we have 150 volts at the rectifier grid bridge in here that 150 volt will be passed to the 150 volts terminal of upper impulse forming circuitry after 150 volts is passed to this terminal, the two capacitors serve as a part of the P filter, smoothing post DC from the rectifier. The neon bulb gives an indication of the presence of 150 volt at the terminal. 220 microhenry chalk prevents any AC component go back to the DC 150 volt line. In upper block of impulse forming circuitry, we have uh, three sub blocks. In upper block, we have uh, two output signals. One is square, one is invert square. It is unclear how the switch K operates with those signals. Signal from DD2 is feeding the next block on the right. That is DD1. The signal is then given to the base on the transistor, activating junction, collector, emitter, and then the signal through TR1 goes to RG58. At the collector of the transistor, we are dealing already with the high voltage, high power signal that is feeding RG59. After the coupling with L4, the signal goes to the rectifier, the grids bridge, induce 220 volts and then lights up the light bulb. The function of the coil set assembly L4, L3, L2, L1 was partially explained in part number one of the video and will be the subject of the further explanation 
And now, since we have approximately 220 volts on the light bulb, we have a 220 volts on the input of ATX, which is the regular power supply from the computer. And by that, it is being transformed and rectified to the 12 volt DC from the other side of ATX. So now we have our 12 volts from the other side of regular computer power supply that will be used to power back our pulse forming blocks. Our switch K and the battery will remain unused all the time. Thank you very much, Guy, and see you with the part number three. Or maybe see you when free energy that I'm sure exists will be available to every child in the earth, every person suffering and not being able to withhold himself. Of course that must be gradation, of course that must be somebody rich and somebody poor. That's how the world is made. But I don't care. It's not my business. It's not my part of tea. My part of tea is just to make it happen. Free of patent for every one. Every American as well. Have a good one. This is Wesley and that's Wesley's News.